What's up, guys? I'm Chris. Welcome to VHP Engines. Nah. So, um, I wanted to talk about uh, a certain particular person, and it's something I've been meaning to do for a couple weeks now. But you know, like I say, I tell you guys all the time, I plan on doing this, I plan on doing that, and then I take forever to do it because I'm a procrastinating piece of shit. And things have just been crazy in my life the last couple of weeks. For those of you who know, I've been tracking. But uh, anyway, so finally got myself stirring the juices. And like I usually say, if I'm thinking about doing something and I don't really quite feel, feel right about it, I'm always looking for one last piece of the puzzle before I can get that final spark to go. I found it today uh, while I was meditating on the toilet. <laughs> but man. Listen here, okay, first off, to think that's not a bad thing because this is where a lot of my great ideas come from. It, when, you, when you spend your whole day out baking in the fucking sun, working on bullshit trucks, and then you go to the gym for a while and you come home, you just you look forward to that time to just sit, right? So sitting, uh, I came up with my last idea that I can add to this. Now, it's a whole different kind of topic, but it kind of falls in line and it makes this a more complete video. So now I feel a little bit better about doing this. This isn't just something like a three-minute thing. Uh, so, uh, Baytech is the guy I want to talk about. I'm fairly certain it's a guy. Now, I will admit that I have not watched enough of the of the stuff myself to know the full details on the channel yet. But uh, from what I get, it's a Scottish dude. Um, and he's building, or no, correction, has built a FD or K20 turbo swapped FD RX7. Now, uh, I've been aware of Baytech for quite some time thanks to Honda Vlogs, right? And uh, now, e even myself, I've been subscribed for a while. I'm a subscriber and I do follow them on Instagram, so that's how I like to do it. Oh, see, a lot of the times I don't, you know, because of the way I my life is scheduled and shit, it's hard for me to really sit down and just watch YouTube things. Um, a lot of times too because you know like even like myself my videos tend to be anywhere between 10 to 15 minutes and so uh, you would think oh why don't you why don't you make time to watch that well a lot of times it's like I don't want to it's harder to invest in the shorter things it's like because I have a, a lot of times when, when I finally do get time to just sit and chill and watch TV I want to put on something that I don't have to click away from I just want to put it on and let it ride so I can vegetate on the couch and not have to make my mind think and find something again anyway so I the, that's bullshit. So I, I didn't want to talk about why I haven't watched fucking videos, but you know, this, this is just the reason why in general I don't watch other people's YouTube stuff. So like you have to really come out as something special for me to, to really take my time to watch your shit on YouTube. Um, but it doesn't mean that there's not guys out there that I'm aware of that I like that I talk to that I like to promote and like to still keep track of what they're doing. You know, I, I like to do that through Instagram. That's why I say, you know, uh, just like friends of mine put me on Instagram years ago, uh, I like to put others on Instagram if they're not. Like, you definitely should be. Uh, one one time, a couple months ago, I think a female friend of mine asked me, like, what's the use of Instagram? Like, what's the point if you're just going to do everything on Facebook? And the way I came to, you know, like, well, what, what is the use of Instagram? I'm like, oh, well, right away, it's thinking like that. It's like, your Instagram is like your online resume. It's like, it's your snippet resume of your work if you're in this kind of, especially if you're a mechanic. That you, um, that's something you can show clips of your jobs or show pictures of your jobs or whatnot, and it's a way for people to digest things that you're doing on it in a very rapid rate, right? This is another reason why I like to keep my followings really small, so that way I'm very selective of the shit that I see in my timeline. So the shit that pops up in my timeline is in clutter. I'm not randomly scrolling through it fast. It's shit that I really want to see. Um, so yeah, I follow uh, Baytech on on Instagram, and that's how I keep tabs on his channel. Now, being curious about, you know, growth-wise on Baytech, especially, you know, I think uh, since the time I became aware of Baytech and where they're at now, it's less than a year. And when I first stumbled upon the channel, not stumbled upon, but became aware of the channel, they were in the process of swapping this fucking car. And it's already, the swap has been done and the car is running. And a lot of this is custom fabrication. So that brings me to think, like, why the fuck these guys, or this guy hasn't got a bigger subscriber base than he has right now. He has... A little bit under a thousand subscribers and I think that is just fucking ridiculous man like for as many people who have passed through VHB engines which I can say it's been a while thankfully 
uh, it come through and ridicule or talk shit about me not doing enough on this channel because like uh, my builds have become few and far between that I showcase on here because building engines you can only do so many times before it gets extremely repetitive and boring, right? Especially when I build tend to build the same kind of shit. So I stopped really focusing on that a long time ago. Like uh, it has to be something I haven't done that I felt that I feel is kind of unique enough. Or maybe if I'm bored, and I want to talk about something when I'm that I'm filming. And then I'll film me building an engine style way. It gives me an excuse to talk about something that's kind of random, but give you a setting to look at something, you know, if you're interested in that kind of thing. So when I look at Baytech and their and their custom fabrication of creating this car, and the fact that this is, a, you know, uh, what I would consider an exotic, because you know how many FDR X7s do you see rolling around? Like, I don't see any at all. Like, it's extremely rare. Uh, they're about as rare to see as a Supra uh, Mark IV. Like, and even then, I would say that I'd see more Supers more often than I see the FDR X7. So, I don't understand how these guys, are, uh, how Baytech can have a channel that's, you know, this kind of, it's an exotic Honda build, and they're on the road driving this car and showing tuning stuff and fabrication and, you know, rigging turbos to work for the car. Like, I just, I just don't understand how they don't have a bigger following. And please don't mind my peacock hair or judge because I, I know it needs fucking maintenance. But I thought I would be bald right now. So, yeah. And I was kind of holding out. But now I've got like a 20 to 24 day timeline. So, yeah, I'm going to get a fucking haircut this weekend. But until then, you know, Jesus, just get, cut me a little slack. All right? I can't help that it, it dried out retarded. <laughs> All right. So, anyway, yeah. Um, guys, if you're watching my content, you know, I don't, you know that I don't ask for subscribers or, or likes or whatever anymore. This is not something I've done. It's something I used to do back in the day, like back when I was uh, thousands of subscribers less. And I thought it was something I was supposed to do because I saw other people do it. And, you know, oh, please like and subscribe. I figure if you like my shit enough, you're going to fucking do that anyway. I don't need to tell you that shit. I mean, how many of you, are, as, how many of your minds am I actually going to change by telling you that? But to, show, just to be a little different this time... Even when I've showcased other channels before and other people, I've never really said, you know, to go and subscribe or not. I, you know, I just say, check it out. I think it's interesting. This is definitely, I'm going to say, check out if you think it's interesting. If you guys are, are like some of my long-term subscribers and you really haven't, if, if, you, if you're my long-term subscriber base, you've been around for a while, I'm reaching out to you guys, man. Like, I know that it's, it's, not, it's not something I ask too often, so I'd appreciate if you could show a little love in doing this. If you're not already subscribed to Baytech, please go out and do that. You know, sometimes people are shallow and vain, and they will ignore a channel because it's size. You know, the assumption is if you don't have a lot of subscribers already, then what's the point of watching your shit? I think that they have uh, um, the Baytech brings a lot to the fucking to the uh, to YouTube right now, even if it's only one platform. Especially with as many people come to me with all kinds of crazy weird. I want to build a fucking a Jeep with a fucking K swap. You know, like. If you like that kind of shit, it's an, it's an exotic build because it's a car, it's an engine going into a chassis it wasn't fucking ever meant for, and not even the same company made, and it's, it's a car that's rare to find, you know, and uh, and it's, it's a turbo, so it's just, you know, I don't think they have any dyno numbers on the car, they have the car in action, so I, I would say, yeah, please go to Baytech and click on the subscribe button, even if you don't plan on watching everything that they post, even if you don't watch them every day, it's nice to have them... Even if it's like a semi notification, it's good to just keep tabs with the guys like these just to go back and see what they're going on. Because I know it's only a matter of time before they do something next. And I'm extremely curious to see not only dyno numbers from where the K's at, but I would very much like to see what the next uh, what the next project's going to be. And then that will lead me into the next half of this video I wanted to talk about, which was the spur, the, the spark that got me to really want to talk on here, right? Um... So you guys have seen my little clips I've been posting recently at, at Rogers Niven Racing uh, is Honda, right? So if you don't know, uh, if you're if you are one of the newer groups that has been recently within the last four or five months or so, I think uh, oh, the June, May, so right around the time of right around May this year. I had a guy that DM me and he asked me for a build. Now a lot of people do this. 99.9% .9 of the people who hit me up and ask me for prices and ask me for engines and all this shit do not follow through. This in turn leads me to be 
a little bit rude sometimes because it's aggravating to know that I have somebody who's gonna what is this for a builder that for a builder what's this price or what's this price or what's that price or how about this or how about that ask me a million questions on something and then disappear like fucking smoke and never come back so when, when um when Roger comes and asks me for you know like bro I really want to build you know I'm like I wasn't really in the fucking mood to talk about it and I brushed him off and I think he hit me up again like uh, several days later and I didn't really have too much of an answer for him still because I thought he was going to just disappear like everybody else does. And I was like, all right, well, let me sit down and come up with an idea of how much I, you know, how much I can do for you. This guy is actually what led me into leading that Instagram post uh, those months ago where I, it was like screenshots of uh, notes from my phone of prices for the most commonly asked for builds. So that way I don't have to do this anymore. I don't have to sit and think about it. Like here, I've already mapped out every single fucking part you know including the block the crank all that shit you know so that way if you come to me if you're coming to me from a different state which is where most of you guys come from the bike seems to want to come local um to ask me for a build i don't have to worry about hey you send me a block or whatever i already have something on hand and i have the charge for that and it's it's you have the quote you have the prices for every fucking part and you have the price for shipping and all that in total so that way you see exactly what you're getting and the total now, I think for him, I quoted around like 1100 or something like that. Uh, I think I did a, a little bit of a discount for, for Roger um, to help him out with the build. And he's like, he convinced me that he, was, that he was serious, that he had the money, and he did. He dropped the money on me, I think, the, the total price, like right away. And I was like, oh, well, shit, I guess I'm building an engine. <laughs> and I did. So uh, I built that block for him. Now, the whole reason why I'm talking about him right now is, one, to explain the whole video situation. Like, you see me putting up clips of Roger's car, Roger's car. It's Roger's car. It's my engine block, right? It is the block that I built for him. <clears throat> now, uh, the seriously impressive thing about Roger is something I have did not expect. I didn't expect to hear back from Roger and results until, like, the end of the year at the soonest. Why? Because he also told me that he, was, he had a head stripped down. He was also in the, in the process of building that, too. So, um... I was like, okay, so Roger's got to build his head, which he was doing on his own, and he's got to assemble this fucking engine block all 100%, you know, because I sent him the block, with rotating assembly, pistons, rods, block, and then but the rest of it he had to do himself, you know, right? He had, to, he had to get a rear main steel housing, you know, oil pump, he had to get an oil pan, all this shit, right? And then, you know, head gasket and make the fucking block together. So uh, I was surprised to see that like a month or so after I sent to him, he already had the block assembled on the stand looking pretty good. And I was like, damn, that was really fucking fast. Wasn't expecting that. And then uh, I'm like, all right, well, then, you know, despite the fact that he got the block together pretty quick, that's still the easy part. Don't expect to see him still and still until December at the earliest, right? Like a month or so later, the fucking, the engine is in the car and everything's mocked up, ready to go. And we're getting the first start. So I was like, wow, really fucking quick. I was like, wow, okay, you know, but again, now I'm not expecting a December turnaround, but I still expect another month or so to, at the least, you know, because he's got to get a tune, right? He hits me up again within weeks, you know, he's on the streets driving the car and gets the street tune. So uh, that's why I was saying I'm not expecting to see any more videos from, from, from uh, Roger's, uh, Roger's car for a while that, um, you know, that would be it. But then, you know, he surprised me. He's, he came out fast. So, at Curious, I'm like, let me go back and look to see my pictures because I know that the day that I sent in the block, I took a picture on FedEx's scale with the engine block ready to go. I checked back, and I do believe it was June 26th. So, June 26th to September, the very first week of September, the, the fucking, he got the block all finished up in the car and on the streets running. And it's uh, looking like it's pretty good. Now, I think the last video I posted for his car was a street pool. It was 25 seconds. I don't think he was the one driving. I think he was in the passenger seat filming. Because I'm pretty sure it was Roger telling him to rev it out. Now, I understand what Roger was dealing with in the passenger seat. Because I had that shit when I when I, when I had my first turbo car. It was, my first turbo car was SRT4. I bought the SRT4 as a daily while I was waiting for my CRX to come back from the shop. You know, and uh, I was trying to explain to people you know, that there were supposedly car people uh, that knew fast cars, didn't really know fast cars. But I was trying to explain to people, look, my CRX, when it gets back, it's going to be a fucking monster. People, just, uh, they just, you know, people who are ignorant about the car scene just don't know. They, they, all they understand for Hondas is their fart can lawyers makers that aren't fast. Uh, that's quickly, you know, we still have those people in the crowd, but that's quickly dying out just because the turbo shit is so easy to do nowadays that you're getting even the most basic ass Honda owners are going really fast. 
So anyway, I would, you know, let somebody drive the SRT4 so that way they really would understand, get an understanding, you know, what it's like to be in a turbo car. And I would tell them to go, like, punch it. People get nervous. They they don't fucking throw it. They don't drive it out all the way. They shift really soon and they just freak out because they're not expecting that kind of response. And so it seemed to me that, uh, that you know, Rogers had to tell him to go because you get nervous in the moment. You're like, holy fuck. And, you, and you've never been in something behind that, you, like that before. You've never been behind the wheel of a car that's that fast. You freak out. You want to change. You want to switch gears because you think it's going to fucking explode on you. Or it's just, just the speed itself. It just it trips you out. You're not ready for it. So anyway, <laughs> to talk about that, you know, that's, I, I still think that from the 25 second clip we got, the car is pulling pretty nasty, right? And I don't even think it was it was it wasn't really being 100% pushed off off go, and you know there was a little bit of hesitation between shifts and stuff. So I think that car is yeah he's he said it was on 25 psi during those pulls. He's not been on a dyno yet. It's only been street tuned, but 25 pounds uh, with that block, I would imagine it's uh, 450 plus at the least, because I had a low compression like nine compression uh, nine something in the one compression in a B16. And uh, I think it was 9.1 compression to B16, and I was running um, a similar turbo. And I think I was also around 25 PSI, I do believe. It was, I think it was right around there, and I was making 440. Now, less displacement, and so I would imagine that he's making a little bit more power at the least, you know, at least 450, right? And now the guy who tuned the car believes it's around 500. We won't know for sure until we get it on the on, on the uh, on the dyno, and I'm not even 100 percent sure yet if it's tuned on E85. He told me the original plan was to tune on pump and tune on E85. I haven't hit Roger back up to ask him, you know, but that's something to consider as well. If he's not on E85 yet, then he's then um then yeah again that's something that's something that I didn't consider. If he is tuned on E85, then then it could very well be that he is around the 500 wheel horsepower mark. Um, as far as what he's done so far, like if you, if you went to Instagram, I have, uh, the picture, the same clip that's on Instagram and I also have the screenshot from our conversation we had his, his first out running, running around out there is a, is a CTSV in 2018 CTSV. I went and did my poking around real quick on Wikipedia. Cause the last time I remember hearing about those cars, they were like 500 horsepower. Now, uh, it's, uh, I think that that, that year in that iteration, I think it only has one engine package, the supercharged V8. And it's like 600 plus. Now 638, I think it was the numbers I saw. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but if I am, I don't think I'm far off. Now, of course, that's crank. That's crank rated horsepower. And yes, the car is you know 4,000 pounds, but it's still over 600. So even though it's you know it's a hefty car, the car is still packing some serious fucking heat. And from what he says, he killed that fucking car, right? And I don't doubt it, you know. So um, and he's a, he, you know, the easy kill. And the, even the CTSV driver was giving him fucking props on like, what the fuck is that car, right? And then, of course, he, Roger himself, the owner of the Civic, fucking drives a Busa. And he's like, for somebody who's coming from off of a, a street bike that's fast to go to the car, you know, respect for the fucking car when you're already used to driving at high speeds off of a bike. Um, so the reason why I'm talking about Roger specifically right now is because, one, I wanted to just, you know, give him props for that and explain, you know, the video clips for those of you guys who are new that don't understand why I'm talking about Roger's car. You know, that's the reason why I'm uploading clips. It's not like there's somebody else's car, some friend or some random guy. It's a car that has a block that I built recently, right? And uh, another thing is a thank you for that because the last person who came back to me with footage of a car doing work that I, from an engine I built, I think was like 2016 with Ivan's B16. And that was the last engine that I sold before I left Florida, right? It was that built B16 block. And, uh, you know, I've done other engine builds and other people have got engine builds from me since then, but most of them disappeared just like the same people who have asked me for builds mostly disappear. So it's, uh, it's, it's been a big help for me and big props. And we've gone back and forth on the phone a couple of times and, you know, I'm so fucking impressed by how fast he's gone and like, you know, the fact that where he lives, I was like, man, I, he even had me considering hopping on a fucking plane to go up there and meet him in person. The problem is, is like, uh, because of my whole missing time for work for MEPS and all that shit, you know, my uh, paychecks got chopped up. So I, you know, I, it's just, and I had, I had to drop a big fucking chunk of money on paying off some old shit. 
So timing plus, you know, the me spending sixteen hundred dollars within the last week or so, I I couldn't it's just it just not not so much the plane ticket would that would hurt my pockets, but the trip itself because it would just wanna be in a hassle like me trying to secure time off from work to go up there and oh a, a couple of other personal reasons, right? So but it was it was a thought to cross my mind. I I sat back in the chair for a minute and I was like, Huh oh, man, that's nice, right? You know, and then of course he mentioned like come up here and work with me and I'm like, Well, you know, that's actually like how fast he is would be like a dream, a dream partner right there. But at the same time too, I gotta immediately consider that me and him working together would be pointless because he does more than I'm willing to do. I'm only willing to do engines. I don't want to build cars for people. I think that you know, I think that uh, Roger, he, we and him talked, and he's he's gonna attempt to do his own engine build, you know, soon. Like he built a head, he put it on the block. You know, doing the uh, doing your fucking the block itself isn't that much of a isn't that huge of a leap. It's not that big a deal. Like I tell you guys all the time, this is why I'm on here. I'd rather try and teach you guys how to build engines instead of buy from me. Yes, I want to sell engines, but eventually I think that parts will be my thing to make the money off of, and uh, you know, hopefully I can get to that point. But anyway, so the whole idea of me going up to partner with somebody who's eventually gonna be doing more work than me, it makes no sense. Like, and it, it makes no sense. Like you're gonna be doing your own thing. So me coming up here for what? What am I gonna do? Add an extra engine. You're gonna once you once you anybody that wants to do this, once you build your own engine the first time and you work out your kinks, you get used to doing your thing, and, you know, you make your mistakes, or maybe you don't because you've seen some shit here on VHB engines and you don't make the mistakes, right? Because you had some learning somewhere else. Then you'll see that uh you can do your own thing, right? Now, another reason why I wanted to talk about Roger is because the fact that he's gonna be doing his own engine, you know his next project right you know like any car guy you get one project done you're automatically immediately going to the next one you're next you're thinking about the next one already right and the next one he wants to do he wants to do a full build for himself so roger this is me telling you that if you're going to do this like and you're serious about doing this and you want to do this more often that you should definitely consider hopping on youtube uh you already have a car that you can go out and film a lot for and i won't appropriate any more of your footage <laughs> Like I, uh, you know, if you want to give me footage to put up here, then uh, I appreciate that because I need more of fucking my, you know, my work out there putting down work, right? So of course, when you get the, you know, the, the dyno footage, that's you know something that's gonna, you know, I'm gonna put up. But I don't, I do, I do think that from after that, you don't really have to send me anything else. I think that at that point, the the point has been made. Unless you got some, you know, you're actually out there in fucking Mexico doing some races and you want to send me that, that'd be cool. I'd, I'd share that as well. But um, I definitely think that you have a car right now that's got a, uh, that's got something that's interesting. It's like especially if you meet your horsepower goals, which I do believe you will. Five hundred plus horsepower car, turbo Honda out there doing races and all that good stuff. That right there will immediately get you a shoe in with a lot of the casual car fans that will that just want to watch cars race and don't care about the technical stuff. So you already have an edge up on me because I don't have that because I haven't I've been letting my car my car sit for so long and I haven't focused on finishing it. For a million different excuses, I come up can come up with. Uh, I would definitely suggest that. Um, and then also, you start you know, when you get to the point where you're building your own block, you're building your own engine, and you're putting it in a car and getting it tuned. And you have your results. You'll have a start to finish uh, build, and I now see that you can do that in a very short time. So you are sitting on a potential gold mine of subscriber base. You already have a car that's fast that you can show races of, and you're about to start an engine build for you know a fresh engine build. So you have a car that can get the casual people's attention, and then you have a build that can get the more technical appreciative people, and have it gone right there. And then you can start off, you know, starting off building your repertoire there, and eventually even doing what I've done and offering engine builds to other people. And then then your whole thing with where you live doesn't even become an option, uh, doesn't become an obstacle anymore because you literally can reach out to the entire world. All right, so. Anyway, yeah, um, I guess, wow, I'm surprised here. I, I went a little long-winded. I uh, wanted to be in a lot longer video than I thought, and I spent a lot more time talking about Rogers than I expected. But I, like I said, too, like, guys, really, I really go give the subs to fucking Baytech if you haven't already. You know, follow along with what they're doing. Their shit's great. And um, hopefully Roger will pick up some inspiration here, and we'll start a YouTube channel. And if he does, I will share that in, you know, the next uploads. That I do after that and I will share on social media and whatnot to go give that guy a check out because uh, I think that he has a lot of potential he's sitting on a you know a lot of potential right now that he could definitely be another another name in the Honda scene and if he definitely follows through with the engine work uh, he'll wind up fucking dwarfing me with the quickness because I just don't have the the discipline right now and to, to work outside in the hot fucking Sun in public 
you to finish these cars. I, you know, I very much believe that when I get to the point where I have a garage again, which hopefully it will be the case, uh, once I go out, everything everything goes according to plan. I go to the, back to the army at the end of the month or beginning of the next month or whatever. I get the training knocked out. Um, I will definitely be holding out for whatever duty station I go to. We'll have a garage, and then things will change. Now I can't say it'll be a rapid change, just because of the fact that I know that it's you know it's a 5:30 in the morning type deal to potentially to to or, to or at least five o'clock in the afternoon type shit as uh, army lifestyle five days a week. But you know there's always a decent amount of three days and four day holidays throughout the year, and there is always the weekends to look forward to. And I think that I can definitely get some shit done at a more rapid pace um, once I have a house with a garage again, and that's definitely something that's gonna happen. All right, guys, so uh, I actually have a couple other videos I want to do, a couple other things to talk about, and, um, yeah, I think uh, I might do at least one more of them after this, and uh, so I might see you soon. Thanks, guys, for watching, and peace.